Hey everyone, a wise man once told me if you're not early, then you're not on time, which is why I came in 30 seconds early for building a bag. So um, I'm going to finish the parts of this and talk a little bit about what I'm building here. And I got a couple cameras. I just want to talk to you guys and also this one where you can see what's going on in here. And there are some new toys in here. Um, I am absolutely obsessed with going smaller and lighter and more nimble in all my sound packages, all the way from the big, big cart to the medium sized cart to itty bitty bags, just like this. And, um, I am building this one for a purpose, which is of course, uh, something I'm working on for this channel right now, which will launch one day anyway good evening to everyone and thank you for joining um i'm going to talk a little bit about um bag stuff and building bags out and really prepping a bag for what i'm doing tomorrow uh, a friend of mine uh chris and myself are uh going to be uh doing some shooting tomorrow for a new video that i'm working on I've, I've really slowed down the release of videos um, on this channel to really focus on making sure that uh, what I make can just be very, very thorough. So it's looking like about one video, mm, one video per show, um, simply because I'm taking about the last one, if you guys saw it was the Sheps CMC1 641 listening experience where uh, we went to a recording studio, we recorded a cellist with Marty Kearns at Down and Deep here in Atlanta, which is an amazing room on Alaska Avenue here in Midtown, and then visited uh, with my friend and colleague, uh, Greg Crawford, uh, at Smart Post here in Atlanta to listen to those amazing microphones, which I ended up using all season on my last show. Um, but I have been thinking a lot about how do I get smaller, lighter, faster. Um, you know, if you're like me, you know, you find a new piece of kit or something that works with your workflow and it really helps you just move forward and, you know, the new technology can propel your sound in different kinds of ways, uh, whether it be efficiency or the quality that you're getting or help solve the problem. And one of the things that can happen is that then you just end up with a pile of too much stuff. And next thing you know, your cart weighs 800 pounds and you're trying to push it up stairs at a 45 degree angle and you're asking yourself, what happened here? <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm going through right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm going through some redesigns uh, all the way from the top of uh, the big stuff down to the little stuff. And um, really important to me that just things are smaller, lighter, because I just want less between me and and what it is that I'm trying to capture. I, mean, I love the technology. I love the tools that we have. So grateful to our manufacturers for all the amazing stuff that they do. But I just want to have less technology, be technology between me and what it is that I'm trying to capture, which ultimately is the performance. That's what we want. We want the best possible capture of the performance uh, without being, uh, with being minimally obtrusive to that process, meaning as hands-off as possible, getting the highest and best quality in the most efficient manner, of course, because as we know on sets, whether it's uh, indie or commercial corporate video industrial video or maybe you're working on narrative television and film it just seems like those schedules are getting tighter and tighter so um first and foremost welcome to the stream so i'm building a kit for tomorrow and uh as you can see here um this is some bits of old kit and some bits of new kit and we have inside of here i'm just going to kind of start taking things apart uh, we have a mix pre three and, uh, try to make sure that this stays on camera here and then Velcroed, uh, to that mix pre three with, or, 
hook and latch, if you want, if you prefer that terminology, is uh, the sound devices uh, A20 uh, receiver. And as you can see here, it even has the sound devices logo on it now uh, versus the Audio Limited. Uh, so, you know, as we know, uh, they got married some time ago. And uh, so now we're starting to see that in their wireless. And then here is the back plate that sends either analog or AES, uh, because this does both, to the two inputs here on the Mix Pre 3 version 2. And then I have also, let me just kind of take that off, this MX power sled, which is by Cable Techniques, that allows me to use a Hiroshi uh, power input. All of which is being powered by a, uh, let's get in here. Let me just, it's, you know, I, I need to kind of do some Velcroing, so it's okay to take all this stuff off anyway. An audio root, sorry, I'm trying to make sure this is staying in the frame of the camera. An audio root, uh, 96 uh, watt hour, 14.4 volt ion, uh, lithium ion battery. And um, going into a distro. Let's not forget that, as you can see here, a remote audio BDS uh, version something. Um, this is the one that has the USB charger, which I think is important, especially with some of this new technology here. I'm going to go ahead and power that off for now. Take some of these bits of kit out of here because we're going to put this thing together. Together. Together, together. And then let me kind of remove this here. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you shake these uh, audio root batteries, uh, that's how you can read the uh, telemetry. And sometimes it works. And this thing is... You know, 96 watt hours. I don't know what the draw is of a um, Mix Pre 3 version 2 in this A20, but I bet you this is all day long, 10 plus hours easily. Um, but I'm just, yeah, I haven't measured it. I'm just taking a guess. And then, then, lo and behold, the, uh, I'm making a mess of things, but that's okay. We're here to have some fun the brand new sound devices a20 uh transmitters and these things i'll be talking about in a future video so no spoilers there but we have two of these things super excited look at this really awesome low profile and so much to say about this which i'm going to say for another time because really what we're here today is uh do today is focus on building this small kit and talk about small bags and that kind of stuff. So, um, you guys, I'm sure, are no stranger to the Velcro. And, oh, I almost forgot to mention, this Porta Brace bag here, um, I've had uh, for probably uh, 10 plus years, uh, longer than that. I can't even remember when I bought it. I think I bought it for a 702 recorder uh, a long time ago and it didn't get a ton of use because it was kind of like a by itself bag situation so it's in really good condition so i was really happy to have this to build this kit because um i'm shooting a video and we're needing all this equipment to talk about the new technology in here which is pretty obvious the a20 uh, receiver and then transmitters um so what do we need to do well, uh, first things first, I'm going to go over here to the comments and say hello before we get started on what's left here because I, I have my flathead uh, screwdriver, my Velcro. Pretty sure that's all about I need to finish out this. And then because uh, we just don't want things falling out of the bag while it is that we're working and we're trying to keep things really tidy. And um, let me open up a window here. Mm. So how's everyone doing this evening? What's going on in your world? Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get right to it here uh, and start getting into the bag. So the first thing I needed to do was um, Velcro this, but um, this cable is a stock cable that comes from 
uh, I purchased from Sound Devices. And um, and this actually goes to, uh, it's plugged into the distro that you can see here. And then of course we've got power here. Um, but this has the quarter 20 belt clip by uh, Sound Guys Solutions. And, uh, and also I wanna do a plug uh, real quick before we get into putting this thing together uh, to Gotham Sound Atlanta and TK because uh, while I was waiting on my new units to arrive, they provided me with a demo, including this backplate demo and uh, this transmitter, which is got tape stuck on it, demo as well, so I could start shooting uh, and doing stuff. So they had been an amazing partner for me here in Atlanta. Um, so they've got locations in New York and whatever. So if they really need someone who knows sound, that you can trust, um, give those guys a shot because they're amazing and I really appreciate their level of service. So um, commercial over. Um, so let's, right here, let's go ahead and remove this. So this quarter 20 clip, if you guys remember, um, oh, look at that, see, unprepared, wrong size, but I have got, of course, a backup multi-tool here. So uh, if you remember the quarter 20 clip from the, um, what is it? Uh, Sound Guy Solutions, Gene. Um, Gene Smith from Sound Guy Solutions. And um, this actually went on my small rig here. And uh, it's very, very convenient to be able to clip that quarter 20 clip because the mix pre, uh, has a quarter 20 uh, mount in the back that you can screw into and it's even got one that comes up that can mount stuff on the top which is pretty dope um, and then let's see if I can find out where the flat head is let's see if we have more luck with this one if not I am going oh look at that see we have luck so let me go ahead and unscrew this here I'm really glad it has a flat head on here because this quarter 20 clip really needs to be uh, secured down really tightly for this to be effective on this unit. So now that that is done, inside of this awesome porta brace bag, you don't see the porta brace stuff as anymore. Have you guys noticed that? It's like everyone's taken over with the new cool hipster bags, but porta brace was the OG. Um, and they make really cool stuff. And as you can see here, maybe in this light, I'm trying to get, there is basically the Velcro saw side is actually stitched to the inside. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually cut some Velcro about the same length as this and then put, so that way when I put this in here, I have a place for it to, you know, sit on the bag. Because the point is, is I just, you know, I don't want it, the stuff falling out of the bag, but I want it to be accessible in case I needed to move it around. That's why Velcro is just such a really amazing tool for like rigging out a bag. And when I say rigging out a bag, is sometimes we build bags or kits um, for specific situations. And that goes all the way up until where you're working on big major motion picture or just small stuff. Building kits according to the project is common professional practice. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut size and I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do with this Velcro to help get things exactly the way that you want it in place. So I'm curious how many of you guys are rebuilding bags right now or thinking about making your package smaller or if I'm just the only one who's really constantly obsessed in thinking about this, which I seriously doubt. Um, here's a cool little hack I'm sure you guys do that with Velcro is when you get it in a big roll like this is two inch Velcro, if you cut a piece of soft side, you can actually just keep it closed like this and then it just stays like in a nice roll uh, when you're storing it. So here's a lot, for some reason I have a lot of extra hard sides, so this is kind of like spare stuff. But I'm gonna cut a strip. This is a, oh, hopefully I didn't lose you guys. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, so my computer just kind of went to sleep. Sorry about that. Um, I got too much stuff on my desktop is what it is. So, uh, this is one inch side inside of the Porter Brace bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut to be half of this. And I'm gonna cut uh, a roughly about this much here. So like I was saying before, I thought I lost everybody. Um, who's thinking about redesigning their kit right now? What kind of things are you doing? Who's trying to be lighter, faster, smaller, you know, because it's easy for the tech just to take over. It's, it, it happens to all of us. And then next thing you know, we're stuck too much in tech and not enough in what we're there to do, which is capture great tracks. Um, let's see here. Okay. There we go. I'd say this is probably about the perfect size for that. Now, I was telling you about, I was going to show you a trick on how to mount these things. So before I mount this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove um, the cables that I'm able to. Like this back plate, these cables are kind of like permanently, not permanent, they could be removed, but they're, try to see where, this back plate, which is the analog AES back plate for the A20 receiver they're kind of really tight in there. So you wouldn't want to take these connectors off by any means. So I just took everything off that I could so I could go ahead and start this process on where I'm going to mount it. So rather than just sticking it on here, like so, like on the back, let me make sure I'm not in the monitor and then just sitting it down, velcroing it down. What I want to do is I want to make sure on the back, I'm putting it exactly where I want it to be. Um, so what that means is, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to disconnect this A20 mini from this, uh, mix pre three, because this will make things a lot easier to mount and build out this process here. So now I just have the mix pre three to deal with, with the battery. So instead of just sticking it on here, I'm actually going to stick it on the, uh, Porter brace. So let's go here down to the Porter Brace bag. And once again, my screen, I, I, I'm going to have to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my keyboard, literally. If I just put this out of the way, then I don't have to worry about accidentally pressing it. So, because I keep hitting the keyboard and, and switching out. Um, okay, great. And those of you who are just joining, welcome. We're just building out a small bag. Uh, nothing too fancy here, but having some fun and talking shop along the way. All right, so here's my strip uh, of Velcro. Here's my bag. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to adhere the, the, this onto the bag first and then drop the Mix Pre 3 and then let it stick. And that way I can place the Mix Pre 3 exactly where I want. Um, so rather than trying to stick it on the Mix Pre 3 and then put it down, I'm going to stick it down on the bag first and then let the adhesive on this put the Mix Pre 3 where I want it. So um, we'll go ahead and start doing that. And while we're doing that, we'll go through some of the comments here. Uh, the GIMP. Welcome. Just want to say I love your content. Just popped in before bed, so I have to watch this later. Thanks for being here. Um, must be in a different side of the country um, or a different part of the world. Uh, probably pretty late on your side. Uh, Miami Sound and Film every time. And then uh, Greg Palmer says, listen to the Location Sound podcast, SE197. Oh, season one, episode 97. <laughs> Uh, the interviewing Paul Isaacs and Gary Trenda of Sound Devices. New backplate coming for the A10, A20RX that has connectors instead of the, the pigtails. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the only one we're waiting on right now, Greg, is the TA3 version. I ordered mine with the uh, DB25, the, the super slot which I don't know, I think it might be DB15, I'm not sure of the pins, but it's the super slot configuration. And the reason is, is because I'll be putting it into my PSC uh, six pack and using it with my Cantar Mini. 
Um, okay, so let's go ahead and now that we have this, uh, it's amazing that I got the sticky stuff off of this. I don't know what brand this is. Uh, yeah, it's called Velcro brand. Probably not the brand, but anyway, this stuff right here, sometimes the, uh, the plastic film over the adhesive is murder to take off like you'll be there for hours so hopefully fortunately that did not happen here on this stream so i'm going to get the bag here and it's kind of dark inside of there i know uh there you go and i'm just going to stick it just like this here and now uh i have it seated exactly where i want it so so at this point what I'm going to do, especially with this BDS in here, because obviously I'm managing a BDS and a, um, and a Mix Pre 3 that has connectors on the other side, I need to make sure that the connectors are going to fit. So I changed my mind and I'm actually going to put the connectors back on just to be sure that um, the... Uh, it's I'm putting it in the bag in the right spot because once I put this in there it's 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 gonna stick and it's gonna be on there so all right so let's go ahead and get the all right here's output one going in one and then going in two here um, so I have been learning a ton about the a20 receiver and transmitter and I have been testing like crazy and i cannot wait to share with you guys my findings and what i'm learning about the system because i invested into this with my own money and it was not cheap uh this wireless system is every bit as expensive uh as any top tier wireless system on the market um all of the big ones and so I had very high expectations for it. And I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys all the testing I've been doing and talking through uh, some of my thoughts on the system because there's just some amazing, amazing aspects of it that I really appreciate it. But, you know, it has to pass the acid test. And there are a lot of different types of acids that I am putting it through. So stay tuned for that. And now now that we've done that and placed the mix pre 3 notice here that thank god these are low profile cables they're not low profile connectors as you can see they're straight connectors and um and it's probably hard i can see if i can get the light on it a little better so you can see what yeah so yeah see how they're straight connectors but these are kind of like low profile cables because it is budding up right to the edge of this bag but it is also behind this distro, which is really, really important because obviously this distro would get, you know, the distro would get in the way if, 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 the, if it wasn't like on top, which is clipped. So I want to make sure that these XLRs have enough clearance. Like this is a really small bag. Uh, probably looks bigger on camera than it actually is, but you can see this is a mix pre three in here. So um, you know, if I do this with my, my fingers, you can see kind of how small this really is. But that's the first part. Uh, pretty easy and straightforward there. Battery. Well, uh, obviously we have room all day long to put this battery uh, in the, what I'll say, the back of the unit here. This light is probably better for you guys. Well, no, it's like deep shadows wherever we go here for these cameras, guys. Sorry about that. If I can, uh, I should bring a, a flat. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cheat it. I'm gonna use my phone and I'm gonna light it for you guys. There you go. So now you can see the inside uh, that, see these connectors are butted right up against the edge of this bag, but there's not any stress on it. That's actually, that's actually pretty good. I don't feel like that's damaging it. And then the BDS, it sits on top. And I could even manage these cables a little better so they're turning towards me so it's not kind of sitting like that and make that a little cleaner. But in the back of the bag, we can, we can, we're going to be able to fit that. We've got plenty of room for that 96 watt hour BDS. Um, so that's going to be cool. 
So let's go ahead and put that bad boy in there. Um, so looking at all the pieces here, um, I'm so tempted to talk about some of my favorite things so far about the system, but I do not want to do any spoilers. Um, I, 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 do, I will say that um, I've been looking at different types of wireless systems for a very long time and paying very close attention to the Sure Axient stuff, Zascom stuff, Electrosonic stuff, and sound devices stuff. And I really think there's some amazing, amazing stuff out there. Uh, and sound devices, you know, I, I, I was kind of in the family with using their recorders for many, many years. Loved the company. Kind of drifted over to the French side of things. Started using the Aton recorders for my primary recorders, which I love and I continue to use. And But I really felt that... Uh, this product and the design of it was just groundbreaking uh, on new levels that I've never seen any other system do. That's all I'm going to say. I've already said too much, see? But the proof, like I said, is in the pudding. So I'm just going to put this battery on here. And then i um, curious uh, how the smart batteries have worked for you guys if you're using these. I, I was using the old MP1s. And... Um, Never had an issue. These have been good. I've had some fail, if I had to be honest with you. Um, but for the most part, you know, they're good. They're, they, they work. Things don't work perfect. So the smart battery, I'm just going to sit in here. I need to be able to access it to change it. So I can't get it buried too deep in there. Give you a little bit of light. It's funny how these bags fill up so quick. Like we haven't even put the receivers in there. And we only got a mix pre 3 and a big old battery. Sure, I could use a 48 watt hour make it smaller but hey why you know if I can fit this 96 watt hour might as well all right so uh, now the beautiful look at this see how this is cool so when you get power it actually pigtails to more power so technically I could also power the mix pre 3 from this as well if I wanted to um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and, and I had a little thought about this usually my rogue power connectors in a bag I don't know if you guys do this I don't even have tape right now but I usually put a little piece of paper tape over them because I've had um, those uh, barrel connectors actually touch connect you know things inside the bag and then shorts the bag um, so just a little hack if you've got any power stuff that you're swapping in and out always make sure that it has some sort of uh, piece of tape on it when it goes over the thing. And actually I have some paper tape right here. Might as well go ahead and do that. Um, okay, let's see here. Which one am I going to be? Yeah, it's this one. So we'll just put a little paper tape. Good stuff about paper tape is there's no residue. And I'm just gonna put this here because I just don't want any power accidentally going anywhere that it shouldn't. So just a little bit of ugly paper tape on the end. And then we're going to put this into, uh, oh, wait a minute. I literally paper taped the wrong connector. Dang. Okay, let's try that again. Let's, I'll show you how easy this comes out. So what kind of uh, wireless has anyone heard the A20 before or the A20 transmitter? Just curious uh, if anyone here in the stream is, has decided to get this system or have used it in the field. Um, I have only done testing with it so far. I have never used it on a, a real film set as of yet. You know, my YouTube film set, I'll be using it, and that's a real film set, you know. Um, so let's see here. Okay, so that's powered. This should be taped down, but I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to do it a little later. Okay, so now, cable stuff. This is where things can get hairy. I prefer to keep my cables as clean and as organized as possible, and I'm looking at this power cable, which should go into the MixPre-3, 
and I want to make sure that it's plugged into the mix pre 3 first. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and fix these power cables to not be in this orientation because this is kind of sloppy. You'll see what I mean in just a second when I fix it. I know it's hard to see. Ooh, that thing is, I might have to get my multi-tool to get that out. Okay, there, there it is. I'm just turning it, um, this here, so it goes towards me is all I'm really doing. And then I'm gonna ratchet it down a little bit. So many things we can add to a sound bag, right? I mean, you know how it is. You go, oh, I'll just do two channels of wireless and then I'll, then I'll do an IFB. Oh yeah, I need a contact now. Then I need this. And next thing you know, you're carrying around 50 pounds of stuff. And I'm just like, hey, you know, how can I, you know, how can I live with less stuff? And just say, hey, you know, we, and be lighter and not worry about all that kind of stuff. Well, I think different types of technology, as technology moves forward, I think we're gonna find that things are gonna get better in that area. So now that that's done, we'll plug that in. How many of you guys are Mix Pre users? Own the Mix Pre 3? I've got a couple of these. I've got the Mix Pre 3 version one, and I got the Mix Pre 3 version two. Um, I use them quite often uh, as plant recorders, different project recorders. They're very, very convenient. Um, I remember when they, when these things first came out, they cost less than a DPA 6060 microphone. Um, I think that ship has sailed, but it was like, you know, the iPod of sound devices is what I kind of saw it as, you know, it's just, it really was a very, very successful product for them. Um, okay. So. Let's go over here to the comments here. I need a break from all this bag building. I think I'm a little bit out of breath. Um, okay. Oh, here. Oh, Greg's got a comment. Here we go. I'm trying to back up to get to the latest comments, everybody. Uh, here we are. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm a little behind here. Let's go ahead and get this. Oh, Iceland. Oh, Iceland. I, I worked, uh, the GIMP, I worked with a, uh, a DP from Iceland uh, a couple shows ago that I really, really liked. It was great. Um, okay, Dylan says, Hey, Michael, big fan of the channel. Cool looking rig as always. Thank you, Dylan. Did you consider Sure Accent System over the A20 line? Yes, absolutely, Dylan. Uh, I hear a lot of great things about the Accent System. Um, I have not bought any as of yet does not mean I won't try some out. Um, these in itself, these two channels, uh, is almost a trial in itself for me. Great question. Um, Camille says, hi from the Netherlands. Hello, Camille. Thank you for being here. I bet you it is a beautiful place where you live. Greg says, waiting for the A10 TX replacement that has gained forward like the A20 Mini. Greg, I'm gonna tell you something, man. This Game 4 technology and the 32-bit float, dual ADC converter, full transmission to that is friggin' amazing. I'm going to stop right there. David Ross says, hey, Michael, thanks for the content. Any chance of seeing the auto scan and frequency assigned function of A20 receiver in this stream? I'm an A10 and A20 mini user itself. David, uh, I hate to disappoint. Um, Maybe if we have time at the very, very end, but like I said, I'm prepping a bag for a shoot that's going to be focusing on those particular projects. So we'll see how we're doing on time by the time we get there. Um, Michael Wynn, what brand bag are you using and why? With right angle XLR connectors, will the Mix Pre 6 fit in this bag? Hmm, good question. Uh, Shoji Productions, this is a, a, a Porta Brace bag of some sort. Uh, I don't know the size. I'm sorry, I can't be more helpful there. I don't know if it has a tag on it or something. But if you go to their website, I'm sure they will have, um, you know, different options and show you what fits. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bags out there that use frames and things are much more like compartmentalized and rigid. Porta Brace's style and design has always been like very loose and form-fitting. I think there's kind of advantages and disadvantages to both. All right. Greg says, would be nice if the Mix Pre allowed AES input so you could have a pure digital signal from the A20 receiver. 
Amen, Greg. That would be super sweet. Um, I agree with you completely. Um, oh, Flipstar. Oh, I am going to upgrade my A10RX. Yes, I believe they do have an upgrade path um, that allows you to utilize the Spectra Band um, as well, which is another amazing thing about this new system. Um, Shoji Productions. What battery are you using and how does it connect to the Mix Brief 3? Good question. Um, I am using, uh, earlier in the stream I showed this, but I'll show it again. This is an Audio Root uh, Lithium Ion Smart Battery. And then I am using a BDS right here, uh, as you can see, lighting green uh, by Remote Audio, which is powering uh, the A10 and the, uh, and the Mix Pre 3. I almost forgot what, A20. I don't even know what these products are called. I'm way behind right now. Um, okay. David says, I've got two A20 transmitters in my kit. Oh, cool. Okay. It looks like David's had these for a while. I've done comparisons with other major transmitters. Zascon, sure, Axion. A20 mini sounded best to my ears, but to be fair, most systems sound great these days. Really intelligent feedback, for sure. I was also taken back when I heard these transmitters. I was like, just how clear it was. But yes, they all at a certain level sound really, really good, especially with the newer digital systems. All right. Running 10T with A10 uh, receivers and uh, A20 receiver. Oh, wow. That sounds like a great system, Greg. Thank you for sharing that. Um, appreciate you guys sharing your setups. It's always good for me to learn and like see what other people are doing. Uh, Miami Sound and Film says... Mix Pre 6.2 and a Mix Pre 10.2. Two. two great recorders. Um, you know, you see those things everywhere. I see, you know, a lot of the uh, the sound designers are using them. Uh, just, you know, this it's like, it seems like the, the new, or not the new, the, the, the been around for a while, 7 Series replacement. Um, so, okay. Let's see here. All right, moving right along. I want to start moving towards wrapping this thing up, guys, because I promised uh, myself I would do 30 minutes here. So I can get some rest tonight for tomorrow's shoot. So um, last step. So so we move these, you know, it's, it's really bag management is mostly about making sure connectors aren't strained, uh, making sure things are making sense, and it's secured enough in a bag where it's not going to be, things are not going to be falling out. So here is the A10 uh or a20 i keep someone help me how many times have i called this thing the a10 and it's the a20 the a20 receiver and um and i'm just going to kind of tuck some of these cables back in here ever so gently and i'm going to try to get them in fact i'm going to try to mount this first with the cables on top and definitely go below the battery obviously and I want to mount this on the velcro because there's velcro on top of the mix pre as you can see and I want to make sure this lines up exactly how I had it and that feels right and now I'm going to take the rest of this cable slack and carefully you know kind of just for lack of a better word I wonder how I did here. I just want to make sure that these, oh, you know what? Are underneath the power cables. That there's nothing that is overlapping the, and, and it is. So let's fix that. That's no good. So the, um, the connectors for the Mix Pre 3 are basically on top of the um, the power the power cable I think no no they're not okay I thought they were and I was concerned about that but now I see they are not and then this is the power here as well which has the jumper and, and there's probably a better way. There's a, there's a lot of cable in here. And I'm trying to... 
<laughs> I'm literally just shoving it in the bag now, right? You know, and then just shove everything in and go, you know. But I'm not really doing that. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that there was no stress on any of the cables, I think, you know. And I'll probably go through this again when I'm not streaming and kind of, you know, take a better stab at the cables because this looks this doesn't look as good as even when I did when I before I put in the velcro uh, in it so a uh, couple other bits of kit that are gonna go into this bag is uh, this little doodad this little uh, deity uh, TC1 so for time code so that'll just kind of stick right in here and then that plugs into the auxiliary input so we'll go ahead and put that in there so now we have a uh, locked time code and um you'll see here that i i what, what's interesting is i actually have the uh then i have a strap i have a big beefy strap from a huge porta brace bag for this small bag just for the ultimate and luxury and here's the the final build of the bag and um and then up in here is um the two uh let me well actually here all right and then in the front here we've got the two 6060s in cases and then we've got the two um a20 mini transmitters right here all ready to go and that is kind of I think is ready to go all right so uh, I'll give a little bit more time for comments questions I appreciate everyone joining this evening and um, I'm gonna start wrapping this thing up and uh, go through here real quick uh, da -da 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 -da. right try to get to the remaining comments here all right a 10 what are you using and how is it connected okay I think we might be oh here we go uh, Dan hey Dan it's always great to see you here hope you're well uh, my bag is sound devices a33 with SL2 feeding all four channels of wireless a20 minis and a10s directly via aes the frequency scan and sign setter is all done from the a33 love it dan that sounds absolutely amazing that sounds like a killer rig uh i'm sure you'll be sending your a10s back for the upgrade or maybe maybe not um but that sounds like a, a killer rig just just super streamlined everything i love how things work together you know especially when you can get a tight integrated system like that that's fast and and ready to go uh okay michael Wynn, are you powering the mixbri via USB-C? uh no i am using a uh earlier in the stream i showed it um i wish i uh cable techniques yeah that's the brand showed you cable techniques battery eliminator and it has a Hiroshi input so I'm not using that uh, for the USB-C um, also rocking the same audio root battery system BDS beautiful Dan that is awesome um, the David says Dan Schaefer same system over here A3 SL2 and audio limit SD wireless yeah well um, thank you everyone for being here I really appreciate it um, I'm gonna start wrapping these things up I gotta get some rest because I've got some filming to do uh, tomorrow stay posted on the next video coming up um, it's gonna be one it's gonna take a little bit of time film edit but we're working our way through it and really excited to share with you the results on these a20 minis and also this a20 receiver based on my testing and some feedback and great stuff and and, and stuff that I think that maybe they could do different and all suggestions and everything in between and real world stuff. Um, so have a great evening, everyone. Appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to seeing everyone very soon and uh, good night and be well.